So Florida is known as being the retirement state and with so many retirees moving here and wanting to build a new construction home, I'd figured that I'd bring on our preferred lender, Manny from Centennial Bank here in Sarasota to kind of go over what do retirees need to expect when they're looking to build a new construction home here in Sarasota County, Charlotte County, Manatee County, or just really in the Florida area in general. So we are going to be breaking down everything everyone needs to know when they are retiring and also looking to build a new construction home. Some of the criteria that you need to have and then also some new changes that have come to 2024. So with all that being said, Manny, I appreciate you kind of hopping on this video and Kind of breaking down a little bit because we do have some retirees um, that are looking to obviously not only just buy a house but they want to build a house here and so they really want to understand the kind of a perspective of like okay i'm moving maybe from the east coast and i want to build a house but yet i'm already planning on retiring Absolutely. either right now or i'm planning on retiring halfway through this build right so what does that look like for a lot of these people that are looking to retire absolutely great question well first of all thank you for having me Noah. so it's um, very common to see retirees uh, apply for a home and all of a sudden they think that they're overqualified and all of a sudden they don't qualify. Yeah. So it's a little more, I don't want to say common, um, it's a little more prominent than not. Um, and reason being is because your income changes. Right. Your financial picture just will change the minute you retire. And most people, I'd say probably eight, nine out of 10, your income will go down when you retire. So. Um, it's just a big myth that um, people think that because they're retiring, uh, the financial picture gets stronger and or at least it appears stronger to the lender. Sure. And, and by no means is that the case. We still have guidelines. We still have that to income ratios. Um, and that's been the biggest uh, thing that I've seen is that retirees retire. Um, sure. They lose the income, but they, they think that they'll be okay because they have a large amount of money in the bank assets, whether it, it's a retirement account that hasn't been tapped into quite yet um, or an annuity. Um, so I think that's why this video is beneficial because um, as a retiree, you will have access to annuities, you'll have access to pensions, and you need to understand those um, when you're applying because you need to prove to the lender that you're going to be able to afford it going forward, not just because you have... 500k or a million in the bank right. liquid that right. doesn't necessarily mean you'll qualify sure of course so if you guys don't know yet we are i'm a co-founder of jane development group and uh, manny with centennial bank is our preferred lender for all of our new construction builds whether you're a retiree or you're just looking to build a new construction home here in southwest florida that is who we go through centennial bank for all of our preferred lending because they are super competitive in their rates so definitely be sure to check those guys out as well when you're looking to build so we have had you know with people that have reached out to us looking to retire and so what are really like some of the initial first steps when they're looking to get started on the build process like what is like hey manny like say i'm retiring absolutely hey manny what what's the first step i should look at absolutely um well first you want to have uh, a payment that you're comfortable with yep. once you know your retirement income. Um, and most people, I'd say eight out of 10 people already have a magic number in mind before they even apply. Mm -hmm. um, but that is definitely something that you want to make sure that you have an idea of what you're comfortable paying once you retire. And more importantly, you want to have a grasp on how much you'll be making as income once you retire. Sure. So what? It, so you guys, let's just say, you know, we're look, going through a build, whatever, and um, they're like, hey, you know, I'm looking to have this build, say it's for a million dollars, easy mm -hmm. math. Mm -hmm. And then let's just say, oh, I am making 20K a month, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. And then halfway through the build, I'm gonna plan on retiring. Mm -hmm. However, I'm only gonna make $10,000. How mm -hmm. does that get positioned on the loan? Absolutely. So depending on how we structure the loan, if we know that you will be retiring as a lender, it's our obligation to you uh, to lend responsibly. So we will structure your loan knowing that your retirement income is, is $10,000 less. Mm -hmm. So your income is now 10,000. So we will just structure the deal according to your 10K a month income, sure. 120,000 a year versus 240,000. Right, yeah, so it won't be based, even though you're already making 20K a month at the initial start of the build, Correct. you know, you're only gonna be down, you're gonna be down to 10K exactly. once you retire. Exactly, and as a responsible lender, we sure. have to make sure that you can obviously afford it. Right. Um, after 2008, many yeah. many things change, so uh, it's to your benefit that we have these, these debt to income ratios and whatnot, but sure. 
that's that's the main criteria is making sure that the debt to income right and going off of that saying that debt to income like what is what's that criteria sure. looking like sure so if your income is now 20 is i'm sorry now ten thousand mm -hmm. a month um your mortgage payment shouldn't be more than 3100 yeah. a month um if you were to include your mortgage plus your other expenses on credit such as maybe a car maybe two three credit cards then um with that you can't go over 4300 combined so in layman's terms what that means is 4300 dollars mm -hmm. has to cover your expenses your, your car your credit cards and your mortgage um so you have your front end ratio and your back end ratio so sure um, on a ten thousand dollar income you you want a mortgage payment of 3100 at most mm -hmm. um and as far as uh, principal, interest, taxes, insurance, plus all your other expenses, no more than forty three hundred. Okay, gotcha. All right. So then, what are what's some of this major criteria that retirees should be looking at when building new, like coming to you? What what should they expect? So I'd say the biggest takeaway here is if you don't have an income, but let's just say you have uh, some funds in an annuity or. or uh, an IRA that hasn't uh, began to be dispersed, what you do is you take that total balance. Mm -hmm. um, the lenders will usually take 70%, sometimes 60, depending on the account. But to be on the safe side, you could say, let's just say you have a million dollars in in, a, in, a, in an IRA account that you haven't quite tapped into, you're about to. So out of that million dollars, we will give you credit for 600,000, which is 60% of that. And then what we'll do is we will divide that by either 15 years or 20 years, depending on the program. Mm -hmm. um, and that is your monthly income. Sure. Um, and then we base off the affordability based off those numbers. Right. And you're talking when you say based on the program, you're meaning the loan program. That's correct. Effect. Correct. So we're, to to be specific, um, if we're portfolioing the loan. Uh, and what does portfolioing mean? If, for people? if we decide to keep in-house in house, yep. and we're not going to give it to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, right. then our qualification criteria for the portfolio on the right. asset depletion mm -hmm. is 180 months, right. so 15 years. That's our guidelines right. internally because we're keeping it. If you're dealing with the GSEs, the government sponsored yep. entities, um, it's going to be 20 years. Right. It'll be it'll be 240 months. Right. So you would take your $600,000 in your bank account, divide that by 240 months. Mm -hmm. That's your monthly income. And that's what we will, will allow as your affordability. And I think it's key to note though here in this video is that that's another special thing that, you know, if you guys are looking to get a construction loan, mm -hmm. you know, they're obviously construction loans are a little bit more limited on lenders uh, just because it's a different kind of loan program. Not as many lenders do that. And that's where, you know, why we create the video about bank lenders versus your typical direct lenders, because there is a huge difference between getting a construction loan or getting a loan through a bank versus a, a direct lender or a broker, whoever that may be. And if you guys want more information on kind of the difference to see which, you know, avenue you really want to go in purchasing a house or building a house, click one of click the link either in the top left or top right hand corner of this video so that you guys can watch that video breaking down kind of what the perspective is and seeing what's going to fit the best for your situation. And that's why I think which that's why Josh and I, my business partner, why we like Centennial so much is that they do portfolio loans. You know, they have portfolioed mm -hmm. um, a few of our loans already for new construction. So I do, I like Centennial for that purpose because they're able to be flexible, right? They're able to like, you know, like, oh, well, you know, this is a good, candidate to go portfolio and there's a lot of benefits to portfolioing which we can right. get into another video if you guys want to know more about how to you know a bank portfolio is a loan Absolutely. we can definitely discuss that a little bit more in depth but that's another benefit like i love banks for that purpose mm -hmm. is the portfolio aspect and kind of what they offer versus a direct lender just brokering it out to you know the secondary market right. for example right so there's a little bit more options when you do go with a bank you know right. so but obviously the banks are different because every bank is a little bit more liquid than others right. and to my knowledge centennial is a very they're what rated bank in the country they're highly rated fdic um we're a paper bank um we're a regional bank sure but uh we're just highly regarded on the fdic list yes. just because we're very um Solvent, um, yep. yeah. we can, you know, we can 
have all the bank accounts drained, then we could still be able to lend and that. So that's a crucial thing right there, guys, is that they could drain their whole entire bank accounts and they can pay it all back immediately. And uh, some banks, I'm not going to say all banks, but mm -hmm. a lot of banks do suffer from that. So sure. it, that's why uh, banks do get a bad rap is because exactly. of that. Exactly. If they can't make their deposits or if they can't pay back their customers, they're screwed basically, exactly. right? And I think that's why banks get a bad rap is that's why I like Centennial is that they can pay Correct. to have it all back. Exactly. And I think that's key to note there too, especially Absolutely. if you're looking to get a loan through Centennial. Small Absolutely. plug for Centennial, by the way, guys. <laughs> um, but so yeah, going back to kind of the criteria and everything and portfolioing and the different loan programs, I guess, what loan programs would a retiree have on the construction side of things besides uh, portfolioing through Centennial? So, so you know, when, when we, uh, interview the candidate we typically have you know our portfolio products which mm -hmm. are internal centennial banks and then we off have what's called the secondary market yep. so either that that can entail freddie mac fannie mae mm -hmm. um or even some other private banks um such as maybe flagstaff mm -hmm. um but we do also broker out sometimes if it doesn't feel or fit our criteria or if we feel that it's uh, better for us to send it to secondary yeah. because we'll get them a better rate right. or, or maybe we can just get the deal done. Maybe right. not necessarily a better rate, but just get the deal done. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'd say the benefits uh, for retirees on specific programs, I can't say that there's specific I should, beneficial programs. I should, I should rephrase that. Not specific retiree programs, mm -hmm. but just different new construction products out there for retirees aka yeah, just really yeah. anyone yeah like, absolutely, what options absolutely. Do retirees have for absolutely. construction I, I wouldn't say it's especially for yeah, retirees yep. but i would say the asset depletion just the loan, availability that they can go through. absolutely yep. absolutely um asset depletion loan would probably go furthest with seniors mm -hmm. because they have assets yep, you know right. as opposed to somebody in their 30s and yeah, 40s right. they're still in their building stages of life um so asset depletions for retirees is very strong but then again you don't have to be a certain age if you have the assets we can we can use sure. whatever's there liquid um, what would you advise that someone would have sitting in assets to use that program now obviously this is not a criteria right but right just right, right. a recommendation a recommendation um as far as how much you want to have in assets yeah so like to, you said like if you have a million dollars in an ira that you can mm -hmm. depreciate you know that you can take right like 60, 60, 60, 60, 60 right 60 percent of it like and, what would you say is a, right. a solid amount to have in assets that would kind of make it a little bit more beneficial to go the asset route versus right an right. Route? that's a great question um and, and hard to answer yeah, yeah 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 it's hard to answer but um I would, I don't want to say there's a specific number. I would say this, I would focus more on your reserves. Mm -hmm. um, meaning if you know your payment is going to be $2,000 a yep, month, right. I would focus more on saying, I want to have 12 months reserves. Sure. Um, so what that means is you want to have $24,000 yep. set aside after you put your down payment yep, and everything, everything yep. as your reserve. Sure. Lenders look at that as strength. Yep. Right. So, um, I would encourage that. But as far as like having a specific number um, for a specific build, that's hard to say. Sure. I would I would just say more, focus more on having at least three months reserves. Mm -hmm. Six months okay. is the normal. I'd say 12 is the ideal. Sure. Okay. So so if you know that you're, you want to buy a house that's probably $2,000 a month, mm -hmm. you want to have at least $6,000 in a 401, whatever account yep. that says reserves in yep. case of an emergency um that that's that's the lender's criteria they want to have at least three months you don't necessarily have to have to um and then six months and 12 months is obviously that much better sure um but to to answer your question specifically to buy a certain um in a certain price point i would focus more on reserves than actual money in in assets Sure. In, in in a liquidation account if that makes sense yeah no that makes sense yeah and plus it obviously depends on the house, the cost of the house, Correct. location, all that good stuff. There's a bunch of different things Correct. out there. Correct. So, uh, but yeah, so is there, what other criteria do retirees kind of need to meet or potential retirees halfway through a build, you know, right. that Absolutely. they need to meet? For I this? think the most important criteria is being able to sh prove three year continuance. Okay. That is the biggest X factor for lenders. Yep. If you can't prove that you will receive that income for three years mm -hmm. going forward, there's no point in putting it on the application. Right. Because if you can't prove it, 
um, the bank is just going to say, hey, we can't count it. Right. Um, so three years, you have to show for at least three years. And that's that's probably the biggest thing, honestly, for Correct. retirees is yeah. obviously knowing what your payment or what you're going to make monthly once you retire and right. then the three year continuance. Basically. Correct. That's exactly. That's the main point. I mean, if you take anything out of the video, it's those two main, <laughs> yes. those two main points, Correct. because yes. those are probably the two biggest qualifying factors. Correct for retirees a hundred percent so i guess to wrap up the video a little bit what are some takeaways that you would recommend to say a, pe a person that's mm -hmm. looking to retire mm -hmm. you know in the next 12 months okay. they're looking to get their build started absolutely, absolutely. what are some like words of advice sure. that you'd say absolutely um the first one would be know what your retirement income is going to look like mm -hmm. um especially for the for the following three years because mm -hmm. that's what they're going to want to see right um if you have a large amount of money in the bank, but yep. you won't be receiving any sort of income, mm -hmm. then you might want to take 60% of whatever you have in the bank yep. and divide that by either 15 years, mm -hmm. which is 180 months, or 20 years, which is 240 months. Yep. And what I would do is I would be conservative about that. Sure. And I would use whatever give me the lowest amount of income, and right. I would use that income to qualify. So I'm qualifying conservatively. Sure, of course. That would make sense, yeah, for sure. So if you guys do have any other questions regarding getting a loan, if you're a retiree, if you're watching this video, I'm sure, because if you weren't a retiree, you're not watching this video. So, um, but yeah, if you guys do have any other questions about building, like I said, we are, I am a co-founder of Jane Development Group, where we do build custom homes here in Sarasota and Centennial Bank over here, Manny. Uh, they are our preferred lender. So if you guys have any other questions on the financing side, uh, I'll put his contact information down in the description down below, along with our contact information, if you are looking to set up a consultation for us to build whether it be sarasota county manatee county or really anywhere in southwest florida and if you guys are looking to move to northport sarasota venice osprey any of the surrounding areas we do have buyers relocation guys for all those areas and we do also have a brand new building 101 package that you guys can download 100 free it's just going to be straight value for you guys you guys can go and check out all you guys have to do is put in your name, uh, name and email and phone number and that's all we need from you guys in those regards but it's 100 free for you guys to download and kind of what you can expect on the custom build process or even the new construction build process so all those are in the description down below along with our exclusive vip email list which is just an updated area uh, an update email list for all the new construction that is in the Sarasota area. So with all that being said, Manny, I appreciate you of kind of hopping on the video, breaking Absolutely. down what retirees need to expect. Absolutely. And uh, if you guys have any other questions, just leave them in the comment section down below. But until next week, we will catch you guys all on the next video. <laughs>